I was I was given a drink and I was having fun and uh, the drink was spiked with some sort of I think it was a, a GHD and I was already drinking before that I was ha having alcohol and you're not allowed to mix that. I went to the bathroom and I completely passed out. I wow. had no basically very low heartbeat like close to zero. They called uh, an ambulance and the ambulance could not revive me. Uh, so they had to call a special unit that's like an emergency care unit uh, for reviving bodies. Uh, they stuck a tube down my throat. They were pumping me with air and um, trying to get my heart going again. And um, yeah, and then I, felt, I heard a voice very clearly and that's when the voice told me, you are not done here. You are not done here. That's what it said and it was clearly God. Moriel, I am continuously blown away by what God does in people's lives, especially among us Jewish people. Yes. How Yeshua, Jesus, shows up in our lives and how he changes us mm. and how he gives us his salvation and his righteousness. Yes. What was your moment with him? Wow. Well, it happened when I basically I ended up in the hospital. Um, I was near, near death, near mm. death experience. Um, and I heard, I heard a voice, and it was, it was God speaking to me, um, telling me, you're not done here. Mm. And at that moment, I woke up in the hospital, and I knew that I had a purpose in my life, and I knew that I want to follow Him with all my heart. Mm. Wow. Your name, Moriel, means God is my teacher. It's Hebrew. Yeah. For God is my teacher. What kind of parents give you that name? How did you get a name like that? Well, my parents um, are Messianic Jews. Okay. They are Jews um, who live in Israel, who believe in Jesus mm -hmm. uh, in Yeshua. And it was important for them to give me a name that has to do with, with God, something unique that represents Him in my life. So. Yeah, so you grew up in a family of believers in Jesus. Yes. How did that affect you as a, as a, as a young girl? And you know, as we, we both know this, that growing up in a, in a believing family, in a, in a messianic family, that just because your parents are believers, it doesn't, it's not a default for you. Mm. We have to come to faith. It's not like religion yeah. where we do it, therefore you do it. Yep. We have to have our own moment with Jesus. It's a, it's a relationship with God. Yeah. It's, a, it's a moment where we actually give our lives personally to him. Yes. So you're growing up in this this family. How does that affect you as you as you grow up? Yeah. So I didn't. Not only did I grow up in a messianic believing family, but I grew up. My my, my parents were a pastor and pastor's wife of a messianic church. Wow. Or a congregation. Wow. So to say. Um, so it's growing up as a pastor's <laughs> daughter. <laughs> you went right in, right? <laughs> Straight I into the church. <laughs> in. Yeah. Uh, I had no other choice. Um, and. It was awesome. It was beautiful. As children, we read the Bible in the in the congregation. We, you know, in the kids' uh, services, we read a lot about the, the the stories that Jesus said. It was beautiful. Um, at seven years old, I said, "Dad, I want to be baptized," and I was determined. And he was like, "You're too young to be baptized, Moriel." And um, to me, it was a personal relationship with God, or find Him out for myself, you know, yeah. because. Uh, Believing because my parents believed was not, well not was not doing it for me. Like yeah. I wanted to find it in my own way, in my own personal way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as, as parents, we're told to raise our kids in the Lord, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna they're gonna get there, and they're gonna accept Jesus. Exactly. And so you want to have that personal journey. Yeah. Which, which is it's not only biblical. It's you know it's it's right. It's personal. Exactly, and I feel like that's also necessary because following. Jesus um, is not something religious, it's something personal. Right, um, right. And that's what I was figuring out in that age of like the teens, the teenage. Yeah. And, uh, and that's where, where everything started going downhill. <laughs> Tell me about it. Um, so I was searching for God, like I knew who God was, but I didn't understand, I didn't need Him in my life. I didn't need Him. And um, I went my own way, I wanted to do my own thing. Um, I started a band and I was looking for fame and mm. I was trying to find myself basically out of God, out of the congregation and um, started a band, we toured, uh, I started going into to parties, 
uh, started finding friends that were not believers and uh, partying a lot, uh, going out. The gay scene yeah. was very big in Tel Aviv and I grew up in Tel Aviv. So for me, it was um, obvious that if I wanted to get known and be somebody, I have to, this is what I need to do. Right. So I partied a lot, drugs, alcohol, friends. Um, yeah, it was, it was a dark time uh, because God was far away. I, I felt him. He was always there. He was always next to me. And uh, even when I think about that, it, it makes me cry because uh, I feel like the fact that I, I gave my, myself to him when I was seven um, years old, when I baptized myself, that created that connection that never, never left. Mm. And no matter how far I went from him, he was always there for me. Wow, that's right. Um, so, but still, I, I, I didn't, um, I didn't understand why I need him. You know, that, that was the point. I was searching for the reason why. And, uh, what I did need is I needed, um, acknowledgement. I needed, um, uh, yeah, people knowing who I am and more love from people. That's what I th thought I needed. Yeah. Um, we want to be loved and we want to be accepted and yeah. we want to do whatever it takes to kind of make it yeah. in the world. And sometimes we are willing to sacrifice ourselves and sell ourselves. Exactly. And it's appealing at first, but ultimately it leads to... Yeah, to basically almost dying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think my story would probably not be everyone's story, but uh, I feel like the moment when I I was at this party and I was I was given a drink and I was having fun and uh, the drink was spiked with some sort of, I think it was a, a GHD is what the gays usually take. They It's like a drug, mm -hmm. makes you super calm. And I was already drinking before that. I was ha having alcohol and you're not allowed to mix that. And uh, so I was drinking this drink with the GHD in it and um, went to the bathroom and I completely passed out. Wow. I had no, basically very low heartbeat, like close to zero. And I was um, let out of the bathroom by the bodyguard, took me upstairs. They called uh, an ambulance and the ambulance could not revive me. Uh, so they had to call a special unit that's like an emergency care unit uh, for reviving bodies or like people yeah. and uh, they stuck a tube down my throat they were pumping me with air and um, trying to get my heart going again and um, yeah and then I felt I heard a voice very clearly and that's when the voice told me you are not done here you are not done here that's what it said and it was clearly God uh, and then I woke up in the hospital and I immediately knew that my life is not about people, pleasing people or searching for fame and acknowledgement with people, but my life needs to change where I search for God and His acknowledgement in my life and what He means to me or what I mean to Him, you know? Yeah. yeah. And um, so it, it was a process from there uh, forward. I had to change my friendships. I had to change, I had to cut off all of my friendships, all of my past. And it was a big past. I mean, I was like, at one point I was like known um, in Tel Aviv everywhere. Like people would invite me to parties. I would be in all the big parties. I was like, you know. You were the one that didn't need to be on the list. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, your, but your name has now been put into the list, the book of life. Wow. The Lamb's book of life. Yes. That's the list that really matters now. Yes. And to me, um, at that point when I, when I, when I decided that I'm, I'm changing my life, I'm giving my life to God because His purpose is more important or um, His fame is yeah. more important than my own. And, yeah. uh, he is what I want to um, look for and yeah. um, have in my life, basically. Present every second, every moment, every day. Wow. <laughs> and uh, through Jesus, it's, it's possible. Yeah, only through Jesus. Where yeah. do you think that you would be today without Yeshua? Yeah, uh, well, I, I often think about that and I would probably be selling myself uh, for fame. Wow. And who knows, you know, uh, 
not good not yeah. good selling my body selling my you know getting acknowledgement in all the wrong places right right yeah so what i mean what what an amazing story what are you doing today Today, I am a mother to three amazing children, uh, married to a wonderful husband. Uh, we live in uh, Munich, Germany. Okay. My husband is Bavarian, uh -huh. comes from that part of the world. And uh, my calling right now is being a mom. Oh, it's so great. And it's the best thing in the world. That's so uh, great. There's nothing better, like, there, <laughs> like I would not want to be anywhere else than where I am right here. Like God has called me to be a mother, um, a wife, and it's the best thing in the world. Can I just say something about that? Yes. The, the lure into the world of fame, fortune, success, and approval, it's extremely selfish. Mm -hmm. And to be in a place where you wanna raise your kids and that's your calling is extremely selfless. And so I see this miraculous yeah. change yeah. from yeah. one person to another through through the spirit of God. Yes. Through Ruach Elohim. Wow. That is exactly on point. <laughs> wow. Wow, unbelievable. Yes. Um, giving your sacrifice and that's also what I did. I, I sacrificed my old life. I I cut relationships with all my, my old friends, yep. my old past. And that was a hard thing to do. But when you do that, when you cut yourself off of everything and sacrifice your old life to start a new life with God and become selfless yeah. and not selfish. Yeah. That changes everything. Right, Yeshua is our model for that. Yes. Wow, thank you so much for sharing your story. <laughs> it touched my heart and I hope it touched yours too. And I hope that you are moved by it, that your heart is open to Yeshua. And yes. that if you like this kind of content, give it a thumbs up, like the video, it helps you to push it out more and subscribe to the channel. And if you're Jewish out there and you have a testimony you want to share with us as well, we have our email down in the description. So thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. God is good. <laughs> he <Woo>! is. <laughs>